Welcome to Cincinnati Sessions, a production of the University of Cincinnati Internal Medicine Residency. I'm your host, Eric Worm, and today we're going to cover preoperative preparation for pheochromocytoma. The case is a 39-year-old female with no previous medical history who has episodic headaches, sweating, heart palpitations, and tremor. Her symptoms started a few years ago, but have become more frequent recently. She takes no medications. She does have a family history of hypertension. She has no smoking, no cocaine, methamphetamines, or other illicit drugs, and she has no other symptoms. Her blood pressure is 165 over 94, heart rate is 118, respiratory rate is 14, temperature 98.6, and her physical examination reveals a diaphoretic woman with no cardiopulmonary abnormalities other than tachycardia. Her urine metanephrines are 1,400 micrograms per 24 hours, which is much greater than the normal range. And an abdominal CT scan shows a 3 centimeter left adrenal gland mass. The patient is diagnosed with a pheochromocytoma. The question, what is the best preoperative treatment plan for this patient to prevent hypertensive crisis during surgery? Pause the video and try to answer this question for yourself. If you're next to someone, present this case and discuss it with them together. After you try to answer the question, resume the video. The sympathetic nervous system is the division of the nervous system that functions to produce localized adjustments such as sweating as a response to an increase in temperature and reflex adjustments of the cardiovascular system. Under conditions of stress, the entire sympathetic nervous system is activated, producing an immediate widespread response called the fight or flight response. Alpha receptors are located on the arteries. When the alpha receptor is stimulated by epinephrine or norepinephrine, the arteries constrict. This increases the blood pressure and flow returning to the heart. The blood vessels and skeletal muscles, however, lack alpha receptors because they need to stay open to utilize the increased blood pumped by the heart. Beta-1 receptors are located in the heart. When beta-1 receptors are stimulated, they increase the heart rate and increase the heart's strength of contraction or contractility. The beta-2 receptors are located on the bronchioles of the lungs and the arteries of the skeletal muscles. When these receptors are stimulated, they increase the diameter of the bronchioles to let more air in and out during breathing and they dilate the vessels of the skeletal muscles so they can receive the increased blood flow produced by stimulating the alpha and beta-1 receptors. So when a person faces danger, we expect alpha, beta-1, and beta-2 agonist effects to increase the blood pressure, increase the heart rate, increase the cardiac contractility, dilate the bronchioles in the lungs, and dilate the vessels in the skeletal muscles. All of this combines allows you to move as fast as possible away from the danger. In a person with a pheochromocytoma, we also expect the exact same things, but this is not good when you don't need it. Once a pheochromocytoma is diagnosed, all patients should undergo a resection, but only following appropriate medical preparation because surgery can cause a greater release of catecholamines into the bloodstream, leading to worsening of all of these things on the left, leading to serious complications or even death. Preoperative medical therapy is aimed at controlling hypertension, controlling tachycardia, and restoring the volume status. Combined alpha and beta adrenergic blockade is one approach to control blood pressure and prevent intraoperative hypertensive crisis. We begin with an alpha adrenergic blocker for at least seven days preoperatively to normalize the blood pressure. Phenoxabenzamine is the preferred drug for preoperative preparation to control blood pressure and arrhythmia in most centers in the United States. It is an irreversible, long-acting, nonspecific alpha adrenergic blocking agent. On the second or third day of alpha adrenergic blockade, patients are encouraged to start a diet high in sodium, more than 5,000 milligrams per day, because of the catecholamine-induced volume contraction and the orthostasis caused by vasodilatation associated with alpha adrenergic blockade that can lead to significant drops in blood pressure. After adequate alpha adrenergic blockade has been achieved, Beta blockade is initiated to manage reflex tachycardia. The beta adrenergic blocker should never be started first because blockade of vasodilatory peripheral beta agonist receptors with unopposed alpha adrenergic receptor stimulation can lead to hypertensive crisis. There are nuances in treatment plans for patients with recent myocardial infarction, catecholamine induced cardiomyopathy, refractory hypertension and catecholamine-induced vasculitis, and, and teams should really involve the proper consultants and care of these patients. So in our case of this patient with a pheochromocytoma, what is the best preoperative treatment plan for this patient to prevent hypertensive crisis? It's alpha blockade, typically by phenoxybenzamine, 
followed by volume expansion and then beta blockade. Some questions for reflection. List the effects of alpha, beta-1, and beta-2 receptor stimulation and blockade on various tissues. What would happen if you gave a few chromocytoma patient propranolol and nothing else? What is the proper order of preoperative medication and treatment to prevent hypertensive crisis during surgery in free chromocytoma patients? Pause the video and try to answer these questions alone or with a friend. Try to say the answers out loud. If you have to, rewind the video to find the answers. Thank you for reviewing the Cincinnati session on preoperative preparation for preoperative preparation for pheochromocytoma. Please check out other videos in this series on our website.